you know, we are focusing on the piano today. Right, right. Well, okay. So I want my statement to just be about the piano. Okay. Hi, I'm George Hazelrig. I'm here today with Doug Fern and my brother Joff Hazelrig uh, to talk about how we record pianos. We do a lot of sessions for people all over the world. They send us tracks and we play piano for them. I play piano for them. They ask us, why do your tracks sound so good? Well, that's what you're going to find out today. Uh, but first, make sure that you follow us on YouTube. Follow us at Hazelrig Industries on Instagram. There's lots more videos to come uh, explaining all our engineering techniques. And uh, don't forget to leave your questions and comments below here in this video. Today, we're going to focus on recording grand piano. Recording an upright piano is a little bit different and possibly a little bit easier. Pianos are all different, and some of them have a strong treble, some of them have a strong tenor section, some of them have a lot of bass and not a lot of treble. Uh, so you really need to know your particular instrument. If you want to get a good sound off your grand piano, you need to know a little bit about how it works mechanically. I wanted to talk about this particular piano for a minute. It's an interesting sounding piano. It has a lot of different types of colors and it is a challenging instrument to record because of how it's constructed. Along the bridges where the soundboard is energized by the vibration of the strings. For example, with Doug's Mason and Hammond here, the bridge design is a little bit different in that it has what they call a hook bridge, which features a tenor section that's a little bit less linear than what you would find in more modern designs. Uh, this changes where some of these sounds come from in the piano. And so finding the right sweet spot with a microphone is, is uh, a little bit more work. Getting a left-right balance on this instrument is challenging, as I said, because it puts out a lot of bass and the notes are very spread apart in kind of a nonlinear way. So mic placement on this piano is absolutely crucial. You move the thing an inch and you'll get a completely different outcome. We use a AEA R88, which is a stereo ribbon microphone set in bloom line where it is permanently. There's no changes you can make to it, which not only gives you an excellent stereo image, but it also provides a certain amount of ambience in the room. The distance from the, the microphone is set from the piano makes a huge difference on the direct sound versus the reverberant sound that we get from the room. We're gonna get a good sound at a distance of maybe 14 to 16 inches. The level difference from left to right, we of course want to try to capture as even a level across the instrument as possible. If the music is maybe favoring the higher side of the piano, obviously we'll get a little bit more treble captured. With this piano, it's got a lot of low end and we're trying to balance it a little bit more to the treble side. I follow the bridge line here uh, from the treble all the way down to the bass. And I'm trying to find a spot that's about halfway between the treble and the bass, maybe fa favoring the treble side a little bit uh, because generally the low end of the piano will project a little bit more right around where the bent side in the rim is here. So just about an octave up from middle C on the piano in this case. The sounding board of the piano is really the resonant part of the piano. It's like a drum head or a top of a guitar. And the sound from the piano goes up and it goes down and it does not project out, which is why normally in a concert situation, you use a piano with a lid that's open part way, which becomes a reflector to reflect out to the audience. And that works okay. But if you want to get the best piano sound we've found, you need to take the lid off the piano. You need to take the lid off the piano. You need to take the lid off the piano. And when you do that, suddenly the piano has a completely different sound. It sounds much more natural. Doesn't sound that great in the room, but that's not important because what you're concerned about is what it sounds like in the recording. You've got uh, the strings terminated at one end where the tuning pins are, uh, which don't make any sound at all. Okay. 
The sound from the piano comes off of the bridges and the soundboard, not from the hammers, as, as you might think when you're watching the mechanism work. Um, actually, you really get little to no sound off of the hammer end of, of the strings. Luckily, uh, that's also far from where all the mechanical noise is in the piano, because these aren't things that you really want in your recording. You don't want the sound of, of hammers and actions, you know, making clacking more percussive sounds. Um, pianists really mostly try to get their playing and their instruments to sound less percussive, um, and and uh, you get try to get more of a singing tone out of out of an instrument, so that. So it's easier to carry a melody. If you're getting all percussive sounds, then that sort of undermines that objective. The miking technique that I think is most ineffective that I see all the time uh, with engineers is the space pair on the, the hammer end. So you have a space pair right about here. Uh, the problem with that is the sound doesn't come from this end of the piano. The sound comes from the other end of the piano. Uh, and the other thing is uh, you'll get a completely uneven left to right uh, sound that way because one of the microphones is going to be much closer to the bridge than the other. And the sound comes from the bridge, not from the hammers. And so you'll get a very strong treble uh, compared to a very weak bass end. That's all I've got to say about that. If you want the sound of the piano or any other thing you're recording to sound as good as it can possibly sound, of course you have to have a good microphone, but you also have to have a good microphone preamplifier. Because if you lose it at that stage, you'll never get it back. All the things you hear today on this video and on all our videos and on the Hazel Riggs recording are all done with DW Fern um, microphone preamplifiers. The peak levels coming off of the piano can be extremely high. So you need a mic preamp that has the dynamic range to handle that. You know, some microphones, more than others, are very sensitive to the load impedance presented by the mic preamp. We design our mic preamps to optimize that feature so that what comes out of that microphone is captured exactly the way the instrument sounds. I don't know why we want to get any more technical than no, that. No, that's good. So if you want to hear these techniques in action, uh, a good way to hear it is on uh, Hazel Rig Brothers' Songs We Like album. Uh, and that's our jazz trio. It's all recorded live, three instruments in the same room, no headphones. Check us out, Hazel Rig Brothers. Uh, follow us on, on Facebook. Check out the record. Uh, and thanks for watching this video.